So recently, Mom and I were to one of our favorite thrift stores. It's a Goodwill, not too far from Mom and Dad's house. And when we went in there, I thought, hopefully I can find at least three different things that I can take home to redo. So basically, that's what I did. But before we get into that, in case you're new here, welcome. My name's Mary, and here on YouTube, I love to share many of the projects that I have going on around here with you all. Let's get into some thrifting fun. It was a really foggy morning when I set out heading for Dover. Uh, that is where the Goodwill is located, where I'm meeting my mom. Mark kindly let me use his pressure washer again for this project. The only paint I have that is suitable for an outdoor wicker chair is this Kills Premium Primer. It's like a stain blocker. I thinned it down and I plan to run it through my paint sprayer. I had an old piece of foam lying around here that I'm gonna cut down to the right size for the seat for this chair. I should probably invest in some sort of an electric tool maybe for cutting foam, but honestly this little saw is working pretty good for me.
one of you guys had actually sent me this pretty fabric a while back and I just haven't had the right project to use it for and I think it's going to look great on this chair and I'm always amazed when I get things from you guys how you know what I like like I would have picked this out for myself too it's just that perfect color I love the pattern of it and I plan to just tuck it under the foam. I feel like the fabric and the foam are clingy enough that it's going to stay put. That way I can change it out whenever I want. And of course it's a lot quicker than, you know, having to sew a cover. I want to create a throw pillow for the chair and I think a white with some sort of a floral design would look perfect. Went ahead and designed one on Canva and printed it out onto transfer paper. And here I'm using my heat press to iron it onto the cover and I'll have the link for this heat press down below in the description box. I've talked about it before, it's one of the most amazing tools to have on hand if you enjoy doing this sort of thing. So let's take a closer look at this piece. I was instantly drawn to the wheels on here. I know it's probably a weird thing to notice, but I like if a piece is actually mobile like this. I feel at one point there was probably drawers in here and one of these sections is missing. So it is a bit sorry looking, but right when I saw it, I thought, a little beverage cart of sorts. I thought I might even turn it around and have this part for the front and maybe add a cool little decal or something on here. And I like how these little wings flip out. So imagine you're hosting someone on your front porch or back deck and you need a place to set some beverages on. So definitely we'll be getting some paint and some other things. Probably create some open shelving in here. So let's see what we can do. Here I'm using a crud cutter to go over the piece, uh, just cleaning it up. And crud cutter also kind of deglosses your surface. Um, so I'm doing this instead of actually sanding. Yes, I'm painting this piece white. I had debated to go with a light blue, but changed my mind. I thought, you know, white is just so much easier to work with as far as, you know, if I want to add any decor transfers, decals, anything like that. Um, it'll just give me a nice neutral base to work with. Plus, if I decide to sell it, white is often the best seller. I'm using Do It Best brand paint. It's a satin sheen. I did thin it down for my sprayer. We still have pieces of old barn wood around here that's gonna work great for my shelves. Always love the look of that.
Here I'm using my Silhouette Cameo to cut out the decal. I want to create a pattern of sorts on the frame of this piece and I'm using something new here. This was sent to me by Patterson Art Studio. I've talked about them before. Um, they're an Etsy shop out of Texas and they have all sorts of really neat things on their shop. Make sure to check them out if you haven't already. But these transfers are called H2O transfers and it sounds like you just use water to transfer. There's not a lot of rubbing and scraping going on with some of the other ones, which is totally doable too, but I can tell these are gonna be so much easier. I wish I had enough of these little blue flowers to do the whole frame and just that, but I ended up using the other sheet for another project and I just have this one sheet left over. So I'll probably mix this in with just some other symbols and logos. Hopefully it doesn't turn out too busy for me. I can tell as I'm working here that it might be just a tad busy, but I think it'll go together nicely and it looks really great with a white background, I think. I decided to turn this piece into a memo board or a cork board instead of a mirror, but presently I don't have any cork board on hand, but I plan to get some and glue it onto here. But with the brown backing, you can kind of see what it'll look like. I think it would be a neat piece to hang in an entryway, maybe hang your keys and uh, use the little compartments for you know mail or whatever else you may have to stick in there. When I was down here filming the chair, I heard my mockingbird in one of the bushes. I'm gonna see if I can find her, but I'm pretty sure it's the same one that used to let me know when she wanted suet. I haven't seen her recently. I had even named her, some of you might remember, Annabelle. Isn't she cute? And the reason I feel it's her is because she doesn't seem frightened. She's a pretty bold little bird.
I know I say this often, but thrifting is one of my favorite things to do. You know, it's so much fun to walk through a thrift store and just look for those items that just need a little bit of something to uh, turn them into a beautiful accent piece for a home. And when I came home from that thrift store, I kind of forgot to film an unbagging, showing you guys exactly you know, what all I got. But you probably remember seeing those little cafe latte teacups, uh, just the cutest little things. But yes, those got turned into candles. I love doing that, just looking for beautiful, unique little cups and then turning them into candles, selling them on the Etsy shop. So they are available. Uh, there's not a whole lot of them, but we're gonna sell what we have. There were also a couple of plain ones that same size. I thought it's such a cute candle size. And those wrought iron pieces, I didn't get around to doing anything with them. I kind of have an idea for them, not quite sure, so I won't even mention, but you might see them in a later video. And I don't know, did you catch the pretty dress that I found? It was lying in the bottom of the cart. I think I paid maybe $2.50 for it. It was a half price item that day. I didn't try it on or anything. I just took the risk and hoped it would fit. Ended up wearing it a few times already for church. I wish I could get the feel of the fabric to you. It's so comfortable and it has that almost linen feel to it. And of course, I love the idea that I didn't pay a lot for this dress. A few more items to mention for the Etsy shop. We have some soap that is finally cured. You know, there's always that four to six week of curing time. And we have some beautiful fall colors and scents. This autumn spice smells so good. It has sort of a pumpkin scent to it. And then we have a few others that are finally cured in time for the fall season. But of course they would work, you know, year round too. But we try to uh, make soap, you know, for the season if we can. So make sure to check those out if you're wanting some soap. They normally don't last long. And then of course that pillow cover you saw me make here in the video is also available on the Etsy shop. I know it's not quite as fitting to the season, but I think it turned out really pretty. As always, I hope your day is going great. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.